Namaste. So happy you're joining me today. Um, we started a chakra series just for this class, Yin. I know in years past, I've taken it through the entire week and every class that I've taught, um, but I'm doing it differently this year. Um, Allison and I have been doing uh, the Awakening Soul Truth, which is another YouTube channel with our spiritual conversations and content. And we're on a chakra series because 2023 is the year of healing, self-healing, collective healing. We need it for ourselves. We need it for humanity and we need it for the planet right now. So we're all kind of going through it. Um, I will tell you, I'm not going to be as detailed with the third chakra. Um, normally I tell you the color and the sound and everything that it governs. I don't want to do that today. Um, however, if you want to be reminded of that, I made a really short clip um, that I put on my Moonbeam Yoga YouTube channel. If you want to be reminded of um, the, you know, kind of overall viewpoint of the third chakra. And then the one that Allison and I are putting out will be released on Sunday, which is synchronistic with the Super Bowl being Sunday because what I want to talk about today. So the third chakra is the solar plexus. It's from the navel you know, up. So the upper band of the abdomen. So this chakra center is our center of power. Um, so it's our center of power. It's the center of our ego, which is all about our personality and our likes and dislikes. But think about what can affect our personalities. And that is people's judgment and opinions about us. And this is also society's opinions or judgment about us in some way. And this is where we tend to hold on to it. Now, a few days ago, I heard a beautiful message that I had not heard before. And it says, purge to emerge. And I thought that was a perfect little kind of saying for this particular energy field, because we are trying to purge out the falsehoods of other people's opinions and judgments about us so that we can be truly authentic and we can stand in our power. We are trying to purge out anything that is controlling and manipulating us right now, which I personally believe is the narrative. Um, the older I get, and especially through this um, pandemic, I have grown more and more um, strong in my opinion that the government and the media are controlling the narrative and making us more and more divided. And this center is about bringing, well, it is about how we feel separate than each other because the ego can make us feel better than or less than, but um, when we're standing in our power and we, when we feel empowered, we're less apt to want to control other people. When we're too arrogant, then that's when we're trying to control and manipulate. I hope that makes sense. So because this is our center of power, because this is our um, center that we operate from, it helps us to follow our passion. It gives us drive. It's said to be the engine of the body. It gives us confidence to break out of our comfort zone and to maybe step into the unknown and do things that our heart is maybe feeling called to do. Um, I think we've all felt a little sucker punched in the gut these past few years. I don't think any of us are immune from that. And if you think about it, the first three chakras that keep us more on the physical plane, more in this third dimensional reality, this is what really needs the most healing for this year. And this is why because this is the center of the kind of separateness and separateness on the positive side is the fact that we're all unique expressions of the divine. We're all uniquely designed by God, right? That's the beauty of it. The problem is 
all the powers that be are trying to divide, 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 divide and conquer, divide and conquer. And it's tearing and ripping us apart. And the new paradigm that we're shifting towards, and I hope you believe this. And if you don't believe it, just envision how wonderful it would be if this were to materialize is unity consciousness. That's why the Christmas star showed up in the skies a few years ago. It's not the fundamentalist Christian idea that Jesus is going to come down from heaven and judgment day is coming. That's not what it's about. It's about Christ consciousness. Yes. Descending down into our heart, into our essence, into our being. And therefore we can all start to embody Christ consciousness and that Christ consciousness is unity consciousness. It is yoga. It is living and breathing and being in that state of yoga all the time. And I know that's hard to see and um, uh, imagine right now with the world and the state that it is. But if we could all uh, start to channel that, think that, speak that, act that, be that. Remember, we create a ripple effect. We are uh, contributing <clears throat> to the collective consciousness. And therefore, we can lead everybody back to that light, back to that love, back to that state of unison, instead of being divided with fear and anger and all the crap, okay? Enough of my soap opera. <laughs> you can tell I'm passionate about this subject right now. All right, we're going to start. I don't know if you see behind me. I spread out a blanket um, wider than the mat for good purpose. Um, and we're going to start on our bellies today with our left knee in line with our hip and our arms and goddess and turning to one cheek. So let's start there. I'm going to turn this way if you can see my left knee. Don't hike it up as high as your waist because that can aggravate the low back and SI joints. And come down to one cheek and close your eyes. Now, if for any reason this positioning of the arms is discomforting, you can always flip it and turn it down. It doesn't matter which one or both. That may feel better. Oh, let's just take a few deep diaphragmatic breaths. And each time you breathe out, roll down into the floor. And regardless if you're on the ground floor or not, just feel this solid structure beneath you and feel as though you're wrapping your arms around earth. Sending love and blessings back to her. She is actually going through her purging as well. But remember the statement, purge to emerge into a more beautiful version. Think about when we feel a big void. 
we tend to want to feed ourselves with something. Sometimes it's comfort food. Sometimes it's stuff. Sometimes it's just feeding ourselves distractions so that we're not feeling or experiencing something that's in our face. But if we plug back in, if we ground back down, and if we merge with the breath, that is in essence going to take us back to our true self, unifying us with our higher self, giving us a connection to others, as well as to divine intelligence. Now let's take this deeper. Let's inhale, lift the face. Let's walk the forearms in for stinks. And remember, we're doing a more yin version of this. So it's okay if you're not rooting your elbows or lifting up as energetically in your spine. But I do want you to check in to see if you have the tendency to lean more to your left or right arm and see if you can create equanimity. And if this is upsetting to your back whatsoever, You'll walk your elbows out and sink into prayer hands. That way you're dropping more towards your low ribs. Remember, it's okay to breathe through your mouth if you're having difficulty breathing through your nose. Three more breaths. And then slowly slide your left leg back. Bring your right knee up. Flip to the inside of that foot. Spread your arms out and turn to your other cheek. And remember, you can reposition the arms if that feels better.
Remember the third chakra rules digestion. And digestion is not just about the foods that we're digesting, processing, and assimilating, but experiences, environments, and conversations as well. Send your love, healing, and blessings to Mother Earth, but also equally send it to those who are being affected from her purge, those in Syria, those in Turkey, and elsewhere. Inhale it slowly, lift up. Walk the forearms in for Sphinx. Maybe this is good. Each side's going to be a little bit different. Or maybe you need to walk it back out in front. Now, we were just talking about how we need to move towards unity. And I'll often mention everything in the body is interconnected just like we are interconnected to everything in the universe but earlier today when i was doing this pose i'm not feeling it now but when my right hip was opening in this pose i was getting a lot of twitching on the left side of my buttocks and if you think about it right now, that leg's just kind of hanging out. We're not engaging it whatsoever. But that was a sign that something in my hip was affecting the left side of my buttocks. Everything has a relationship. Now close your eyes, hold and breathe, and notice what shows up inside of you.
All right, we're gonna turn the left hand out and slide onto that arm, lowering down to the left cheek. Slide your right hand back in front of your chest and then pick up that right leg and step the big toe over to the opposite side of the left. So we're coming into a twist called broken weave. Sometimes it feels better to bend the left leg as well. And if you want to keep it sweet and gentle, go ahead and do that. You may find that you can drop to the sole of the right foot, but that may put more pressure on your low back. So feel free to stay on the tippy toes. Let's unroll to the belly. Slide the right arm out, the left hand closer. Turn to your right ear. Flip the left foot over to the opposite side of your right leg. And again, to make it more gentle, bend the right knee. So this is good for opening up the meridians for the heart, for the lungs, for the pericardium meridian. When we work into the arm this way, and for the legs, it's the liver, kidney, and spleen meridians. For the twist, stomach, gallbladder meridians. Even though I mentioned the upper band of the belly, remember this also wraps around behind you. Poses that can be good for the chakra are forward folds, back bending, and obviously twist. And core work. All right, let's unroll that twist. Now this is important because you may be back where your hands are on the blanket. If that's the case, kind of army crawl forward. Place your hands to the sticky mat and then lift up and press back into child's pose. Now let's keep child's pose active, leaning elbows off the floor giving more extension to the back, more traction under the arms. And then inhale, rock forward to up dog. Exhale back to extend the child's pose. Let's keep the knees on the floor. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, rock open. Exhale, hips to heels. One more. Flowing with breath. And then pause here, keeping the hands super glued to the mat. Feeling how it's opening up the rib cage. 
breathing extension to that mid part of your back. And then walk your hands towards you. Now this is where we're gonna go ahead and take the blanket, fold it in half again. And then one more time. You may need it when we come down to the knees. We're gonna go ahead and stand up at this point and you can have your feet wider than hip distance and your knees soft. We're gonna do the twisting Kriya. So when you're ready, winding your way around. The owner of the studio that I was just teaching at had an emergency. Um, well, she had to have an emergency tooth extracted over the weekend. And so she's been, you know, missing classes the last few weeks because, or last few days. Um, because of that, she can't be inverted. And she's had a lot of obvious pain in her jaw and her mouth. And she told me after class that her mouth felt so much better. And she was attributing it to this pose. She said it started to feel better after this. So maybe this is helping to break up some of the tension you're housing around your lungs. Maybe it's helping to break up some of the emotions that are pent up in the belly. Maybe it's loosening things up so that your nerves actually feel better and things are operating more smoothly. And this also brings the energy up to the brain. All right, let's slow our pace. And then when you come back, we're going to separate the feet wider, bend the knees for Kali Goddess. And what we're going to do is, let me try to mirror you. Take your left hand over behind your back. Now, try not to pull towards that hand that's cupping the knee. Instead, just keep the arm straight and your trunk kind of reaching out the middle. But then turn your face so that you are looking to the left. And then we're just going to switch to the other side. So now take that left arm behind the back. The right hand crosses to the left knee. Again, keeping the torso centered in between your legs but then turn your face to, I think I told you the wrong direction to turn your face before. <laughs> turn your face to the left. Sorry about that. And that's what happens when I try to mirror you and you're not technically in front of me like you would be live. One last breath. And then unwind that twist. Let's go ahead and come up and bring the feet closer together. Now this is important because I know you're doing this from your home or office. Make sure when you straighten your arm and spin around, you're not gonna hit a wall or a piece of furniture, okay? We're gonna do double breathing. You guys have done this with me before, but just to instruct, short, long inhale through the nose, short, long exhale through the mouth. So that's the breath work. And I'll try to mirror you. We're gonna to twist to the right first. Double inhale, double exhale. Double inhale, double exhale. Keep it going. All right, let's 
Whew. That gives you a little tingling sensation, doesn't it? Stand with the tension, palms facing out. The blood flow rushes up to the head, so let's just let it calm back down. Remember our step to the top of the mat. Hands to prayer position at the heart. As you inhale, drill the feet down, lift the arms over our head. So you're being active with this one. And I want you to notice, we talk about this sometimes, when the arms are flying up, notice the action in this upper strip of the abdomen. Exhale, let's bring the palms together and flow down to Uttanasana. Now, the belly may be kind of um, just hanging out, but notice this strip behind it in your back. Let your arms hang free, let your head keep descending. And then inhale, slide your hands up your leg. Look out, exhale, fold back down. On your next in breath, step your left foot back. And as you exhale, descend your back knee. Now, this is where you may want to slide that blanket up underneath. I'll give you a moment in case you're needing that support. Push down into the right foot. Take your arms up on Janyasana. Exhale, bring your palms together. And we're going to twist to the right. It's also okay to surrender your hips. But put the primary focus in the solar plexus today. Exhale and line, bring the hands down. Curl the back toes under, step back down dog. Now, if you're reflecting back on our practice, or maybe you're already sensing it internally, we haven't put a lot of focus in the legs other than an Uttanasana. So power down through your palms, stretch long through your vertebrae, and it's okay to have the knees bent. Because again, we're focusing on this third chakra today. Deep breath in. As you exhale, sink to knees, chest, chin, ashtam, pranam. Glide through to the belly. Pause here. And you're going to take your arms to your sides. Take it forward of your shoulders. And then separate your feet as you lift to seal. If seal is too much compression in your low back, you can come to sphinx arms or prayer hands. If you're in seal pose, there's going to be weight in that pubic bone. If you lower, the weight will be in the belt. Either way, it's good for this third chop. Lower to the chest. Pull the feet together. Hands slide back. Push up. 
Power back to extended child's pose, active form. Inhale, rock up hands and knees. Exhale, down dog. We're doing a blended practice today since the third chakra is about action. Inhale, left foot steps through. Give yourself a helping hand if need be. Sink the back knee to the ground. And again, if you need that blanket, tuck it underneath. Inhale, rising. Exhale, twisting. And I meant to tell you guys on the previous side, if this is challenging for you, because sometimes it is, you can always put the right hand down, left hand to the top of the knee, like this. Some people like to come up, hand to hip. So you can change it up if you need to. Exhale, unwind. Curl the back toes, step forward, lift halfway. Exhale, drop in. Uttanasana. We're not doing dangling today. Inhale, root down and rise up. Again, feel the openness in the belly. And then exhale, hands to heart. All right, I'm going to face you again. And you're going to separate your feet. Now, we've done this in here before. This is actually something I learned from a physical therapist. So we're going to pull the navel center towards the spine. So we're getting some contraction. Your left arm is going to cross over towards the right leg. Now, Keep and contain that core engagement, and you're just gonna slowly start to roll down like a rag doll. Now, your feet are just lightly resting, knees are soft. And so I just want you to know it's not really about targeting the legs or the hamstrings. What we're trying to to do and I'm going to pull back up because I look too low. We're really trying to contract the core and I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. We're really trying to target this strip from the low to the mid back and this gets the QL muscle. You can even keep your right hand at your belly to make sure that you're contracting, supporting the back in the stretch. Soften your jaw, even if you need to separate your lips. Try to keep the pelvis the same instead of tilted or twisting. Hips square. And slowly use the back of that left shoulder to roll up. And your head comes up last. Okay, other side. Again, belly contracts. 
right arm this time is going to cross over the middle toward the left leg. And again, try not to tilt your pelvis. Keep it stable. And then start rolling down one vertebra at a time. And you don't have to go very low to feel it. In fact, if you start to lower beyond the knee, you'll notice, ah, I lost it. So drive back up. Your left hand is welcome to save your core because sometimes when we start to breathe, we loosen it up, but we don't want the belly to puff out here. In fact, because we're engaging the core, sometimes it's nicer to switch to the Ujjayi breath. And slowly lead with the back of the right shoulder. Gently, sweetly come up. Once that right shoulder rolls back, your head will realign. All right, we're gonna come on down to the floor. Now, when you come down, I want you to rest on your right hip with your feet off to the side. You may prefer a bolster for this and that's okay, but we're gonna lengthen up, twist and turn towards your mat, start to lower down. And then determine for your spine, your neck, what is best. Resting on the right or left And of course, propping a bolster underneath your torso if you want to make it more restorative versus yin. Since this is the same arm position we did earlier, maybe you're warmed up enough to be here. Maybe one shoulder is still giving you grief and you may have to reposition.
All right, let's slide the hands in and push up. And then we'll smaller direction. So spin around, reside on your left hip, feet to the right, lift up energetically, twist to the left. Same idea, except rest on the opposite cheek if you can. And then slide the hands in, press or walk up. And I always like to end with a twist or inversion because when we are working energetically, we're trying to move the energy up. I like to call it the stairway of heaven, stairway to heavenly bliss. But take your fingertips beside you. The one direction we didn't get for the spine is a side bend. So let's add that in before Shavasana. Lift one arm skyward and cross over. Take a few deep breaths. Inhale to center. Exhale, relax that arm down. All right, inhale, the opposite arm will lift. Exhale, cross over and breathe well.
Inhale, up and exhale, relax your hand down. Now, I feel like a sneeze is coming. Anyway, um, I wanted to end in the back bend where we're putting the bolster in this direction. But we may need a folded blanket. And this is why. Even if we can bend over this way, it may be upsetting for the low back. And if that's where if you're aching, you're going to put the blanket there and sit on it and then roll over the bolster. If it's in your head or neck area, the blanket will go to the opposite side to pat it. Maybe your shoulders even. But either way, we're really trying to stretch and open up the solar plexus. So determine if or where you need the blanket. Take a couple cleansing breaths. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Use this time to withdraw away from distractions and worldly events and other people's opinions and dive down into your center, into your power center.
our head and deep with the flow of our breath. Move your body somewhere, some way. Then we'll bend the knees, roll over to the side. Feel ourselves up for a seat. I want us to sit for a moment, but taking the hands to the belly. I want us to breathe into the space, into the chakra. Perfect way to plug back in. Joining your palms together to prayer. Lifting. 